Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I like to make videos on beauty, makeup, skincare, usually using what I already have, shopping my stash, project panning, and occasionally trying out new products here and there. But today's video, I decided to try something completely new to me, a little out of the box, and I'm gonna try and meld two of my interests together makeup and beauty with books and reading. So I am a huge reader, avid reader. Um, I love contemporary romance and like the chick lit genre, if you will. So I recently finished a book called Happily Never After by Lynn Painter, and I gave it a five star review on Goodreads, and I just really felt a connection to the main female character in the book. And the book also did a pretty good job of describing her interests and also her physical appearance at times and like the clothes that she was wearing, the looks that she was doing. And I just really related to this character on a bunch of different levels. So I want to talk more about that and kind of how that inspired the makeup look today. But I wanted to create a look that I felt like represented this character in the book and then also myself because I related to her so much. So I pulled some items from my collection, we're trying out one new product today, and I created this look, kept it clean and simple on the face and eyes, did the bold red lip, and we'll get into the reason behind that. So if you want to see how I created this look and kind of the story behind the story, then just keep watching. All right, so I kind of explained a little bit about the character in the intro, but I'm gonna delve more into some details on the book while I do my makeup. And the first thing I'm going to use is actually a new product to me. It's the Naturium Glow SPF Moisturizer. Um, I just felt like, I mean, A, I wanted to try this, so I bought this before I even planned this video. I've been wanting to try the Naturium line of products for a while. But the Dew Glow, I just feel like the character Sophie, she, I just got the sense that she probably did like a minimal, like clean girl makeup style. Like that's just kind of the vibe I got from the book. So I kind of thought this would be a good base to test out if it's also supposed to be glowy. I just felt like that would be something that she would go for. So, so that's kind of the basis of the look today is gonna to be kind of that clean girl, natural look. I'm gonna use some lighter coverage products, mostly cream products and just kind of keep it like that effortless feel. So far this sunscreen feels really good. It's it's blending in well, like rubbing in well. I don't know if I particularly see any sort of glow coming from it. I don't know. I feel like the feeling of it though actually is similar like texture wise to my favorite sunscreen, the Neutrogena one. Uh, maybe that one feels slightly more like powdery. I don't know if that makes sense. That's kind of how I've always thought of that Neutrogena sunscreen. It's, you know, it's still a cream, but when it's rubbing in, it, it kind of is feeling a little drier and like it's just not greasy at all. And this doesn't feel greasy either. So that's that's nice. So we'll let that sit on there for a minute, but I also just think the packaging on this is like super cute. And yeah, I want to try more from the Naturium line. But anyway, so more about the book. I'm going to use my Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette to do just the really basic eye look. So in the book, Sophie is the main female character. Max is the main male character and they become friends after he actually stops her wedding. So that's kind of the plot line of the book. He has this side gig where people hire him to go to their weddings and be the person that stands up when they're like, does anyone object to this wedding? He stands up and says yes, and then tells whatever um, like story or situation that the person has hired him to tell. Usually it's one of the uh, people getting married have hired him because they don't want to go through with it, but they don't want to be the one to say no because of their families or money or whatever. So they feel like if they hire somebody else to do it, like a third party outsider, it'll be taken better. 
and none of the blame will be on them. So a lot of it is he goes to weddings where people are cheating um, on their spouses or have been hiding something from them. So he does that in the beginning for Sophie's wedding with her then fiance. So they break up and then they kind of hang out a little bit and get to know each other, I guess, like that night. And months go by and then they reconnect because he got her phone number from the night that they hung out and she had expressed interest in like what he does as his side gig. So he reaches out when he has a job come up where he felt feels like it'll be, it could be interesting for them to do it together. So then they meet up, talk about it. She agrees to do it and they meet at Starbucks a lot and her go-to drink order in the book is an Americano with cream. So I got one today just to kind of get in that vibe. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of times um, in the book when she's described, she, yeah, seems pretty like minimal with her makeup and appearance, but also very like timeless and classy. Like she's really focused in the book on getting a promotion at her job, but because she's on the younger side, I think she's supposed, to, I think they're supposed to be about like 28 or 30 or something like that. So because of her age, people don't take her as seriously or think that she's not ready to be in charge. So that's kind of part of her journey through the book is how can she make people around her at work trust that she can do the job when it becomes available. And, you know, most people, I guess the, the solution she comes up with is that her boss, who she's trying to replace when she retires, and some other people at work think that she doesn't have a good work-life balance. So she kind of then goes to Max and is like, hey, we're already friends and we're doing this. It would be really helpful if we could just take some pictures and pretend like we're a couple so that people at work can see that I have a personal life and then they know that like I have a balance. So it's that kind of age-old trope of the fake dating. Um, but I always enjoy that. And then Max, on the other hand, he is a super sweet male character lead. Really enjoyed reading him as a character. So yeah, I just kept the look really simple. Just did some mattes in the crease and outer corner and then this whisper shade kind of all over the lid. So now I'm just gonna do some brown liner. Yeah, so he kind of is not necessarily in a similar situation, but he's like, yeah, like I wanna take over my dad's business, but he, and my mom don't feel like they're ready to leave me to it and move away because I'm not settled down and have a family. So then they get this like mutual benefit thing going with their supposed fake dating. So one of the first uh, weddings that they work together that they're gonna go object to, um, there's a lot of emphasis put on Sophie's look and the fact that she's wearing a red lipstick. So that's gonna be some of my inspiration for this look too, kind of combining that clean girl, minimal makeup look, and then also that bold red lip. And just like in general as a character, I I don't really know how to describe it super well, but Sophie was one of those characters, like I really related to her because she just kind of, she almost was like effortlessly cool, which I'm not saying I am, but that's like what I think a lot of us are like striving to be, just like really, sure and comfortable in ourselves while still being able to have some of that vulnerability and figuring yourself out. But then it just really hit me when she meets up with him to go to the wedding and she's just like casually wearing this red lipstick. I'm like, that takes some guts to just be like, I'm just gonna wear a red lipstick, like out and about. Like I have never done that personally. So that I think kind of said a lot about her character. And then you know, also throughout the book, she's, you know, ambitious, trying to get ahead in her career and just wants someone to like take a chance on her and give her that opportunity, which I also really related to. That's how I felt um, when I was kind of starting out in my career. You know, I was like, I have the credentials. I have the degree. I just need somebody to take a chance on me. And it just felt like it was taking a really long time for that to happen. But yeah, so like, and similarly too in her workplace, it kind of seemed like the only way she was gonna get a promotion was waiting for someone to leave or move on. And that was also very similar to what my workplace uh, was like. There was, promotions weren't given based on experience or education or qualification or anything. It was literally just like right place, right time. You had to wait for someone to leave or retire 
for there to be an opportunity. So I also kind of felt that too when I was reading um, through some of that situation. I'm gonna go in my inner corner with the bubbly color of the hard candy shadow stick just to brighten that up a little. I might come back and do this again once I do my face. But yeah, so then also throughout the book, um, some things that I related to with her as well. She, you know, when she was feeling stressed or just wanted to like work something out, she would go on a run. Um, I also like to run and do that. And was just kind of like, like she was just such an interesting combination of characteristics. Like she was so self-assured, but also vulnerable, a little type A because she was not necessarily a workaholic, but was very dedicated to her job and wanting to get a promotion and like, you know, cared about her appearance and always dressed really nice in professional outfits, wearing heels, which like I don't have to do for my job. And I, like part of me is glad I don't have to, like my wallet is glad for that. But then there's also that other part of us, like don't some of us kind of wish that we had an excuse to dress a little fancy sometimes. So I just kind of was like, oh, like that would be like an outfit that I would wear when they would describe certain things. Like she had kind of a little classic, but like preppy style. That's kind of what I go for when I'm doing more business look in my outfits. And so it was just stuff like that, that I was just like, yeah, like she's also like down for a good time and just like willing to take a risk on things. So it was just kind of an inspiring character to read about. So for my face, I'm gonna use the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. Because again, I just feel like it's part of that clean girl look that she would go for. I'm interested to know too if anybody else has read this book. It's fairly new. I think it was just released within the last month or two. But if you haven't, you should definitely go out and pick it up. I like all of um, this author. The author is Lynn Painter. I've enjoyed all the books of hers that I've read. They're just kind of like light, casual reads that, you know, the romances, but it's nothing too, too intense, nothing overly spicy, um, if that's something that you're worried about. But yeah, just kind of like a nice, fun, and still like over, like, Overall, it was like a pretty upbeat story. Like, you know, most most novels or like contemporary romance novels, they do have that like second or third act twist or breakup or whatever. But even that wasn't, you know, a big deal on this one. It was just kind of nice to read something fun and light and easy. And so it was just one of those books. Every time I picked it up, I was like so happy to be reading it. And to me, that's a sign of a good book. But yeah, so just... That's kind of where some of my inspiration came from for wanting to do a look like this and kind of try out this type of video. It's not super often that I come across a character in a book that I just like either see so much of myself in or that you're just like, wow, that's somebody that like I would want to be friends with or that I want to try and like emulate some of the characteristics of because they just like you know, it was just an interesting mix of characteristics that she was also like a really likable character. Because sometimes when you read books, um, you know, either lead the male or the female, sometimes, you know, they're, they're too self-assured, they're too independent, they're too confident, where it comes across where I'm like, okay, now like you, the character or the author, whoever is just like trying too hard to make them interesting or cool, that it's just like not coming off the right way to me. Uh, maybe I'm just too judgy. That seems to happen in a lot of books that I read. I end up being annoyed with one of the characters in some way because of some one random thing about them. But yeah, so I just thought that was kind of a rare thing for me. So it just kind of stuck with me that I was like, yeah, I could see myself like being more like her, wanting to be friends with someone like her. So that is where we're at. Okay, so that is the skin tint. So very light coverage, still have some things peeking through, but that's okay. I'm just gonna do really light concealer because again, I don't want this to look too uh, heavy, but I do have a couple areas I would like to conceal. But back to kind of the plot of the book. So they, they work a couple of uh, these weddings together. And then, you know, we kind of get to know a little bit more of their backstory their relationship paths, things like that. And so that does come up later in the book where they kind of have to work through some things, which, you know, is 
typically what happens in these types of books, there's, like I said, that second or third act twist or breakup or fight or whatever. But, you know, I think it also showed a relationship, you know, whether it was friendship or romance, it was kind of both at this point. It showed that communication is really important and also that sometimes it's really not that hard to be a good communicator. That's also something that frustrates me sometimes in the romance books is a lot of the breakups or the issues that they face are just from like straight up miscommunication or misunderstanding and sometimes it's like a little too ridiculous and unbelievable that I'm like okay like would that really happen in real life? Would someone not just like question that? or just like assume that that was a ridiculous thing. I don't know. So it was kind of refreshing in a way that it kind of got worked through a little smoother and differently than in some other, like it wasn't overly dramatic. That's kind of what I wrote in my review. I do review most of my books that I read on Goodreads. And so in the review, I did write that it was just, it was kind of just like a refreshing book in that way. Like there was no major piece of drama. There was no major plot twist. No one was like excessively secretly rich or something. I feel like that comes up a lot. Someone either has a lot of money or they're like a famous hockey player out of the blue or something. Like none of that. It was just like two totally normal people going through the situation. I think that also helped make it relatable and fun. You're watching this relationship grow and become more through friendship and romantic at the same time. And I also think that's really important. That's what you want in a romantic partner. You want someone who you also are really good friends with. So next I'm gonna do some cream products on my face. I'm gonna do my Revolution Cream Bronzer and then the Rare Beauty Cream Blush in Nearly Neutral. Just keep that nice and light. But I also liked that, you know, they're doing like, yes, the whole like scheme of, you know, being paid to go break up people's weddings or something is a little ridiculous. Like, you know, it's, it's, not like it's it was it was nice that it wasn't like overly kitschy but at the same time you're like okay like I personally would never do that and I don't even think that, that would be like a real loud thing to happen but it was kind of just an interesting little like quirk to the story but yeah I just always I liked reading about it them working through their emotions was interesting to me just like trying to understand yourself better because that is a lot of what goes on when you're in a relationship or trying to figure out your feelings for someone you're just kind of you're also learning more about yourself and so I think that's also what I liked I felt like both characters had good character and self-development throughout the book they both grew and realized things about themselves that's something that I think is also lacking in a lot of stories that I read the the plot is kept so superficial that sometimes it seems like one of the characters never really changes or doesn't really learn anything. They're just kind of going through the motions and like everything works out in the end, which, you know, that that's fun to read too. But sometimes you're like, I want more backstory. I want to know more about them. Like you think about if you were in that situation, which let's be real, most contemporary romance books, like we would never put ourselves in those situations, all the like fake dating and fake marriage and blah, blah, blah. Like that's just not, you know, we're not all living a lifetime movie here. But you just think about your like, but if I was like, it would be really hard to like figure out your emotions and, you know, stay on top of what's going on and what to separate from what and what's real and what's not real. So I don't know, it was just kind of nice to actually have that character development and growth. And it was always in a positive way. And like I said, they, they always kind of they kept things to themselves at times. That's the other thing I liked. It was a dual uh, POV style of book. So you kind of got insight into both characters along the way, which I also really enjoyed. That really helps me get into a story more when I get both sides of the story and not just one or the other, because then sometimes it does get frustrating when one of them's just like, I don't know. I don't want to tell them how I feel because I'm scared. But then like you don't know what the other person's thinking the whole time. So it was nice to kind of have both sides of that but yeah so that that's that like I said we're keeping it simple we're not even doing any powder products so let me hop off and do my mascara I'm just gonna use the covergirl clean lash blast felt like this would go with the look with the clean minimal and I just felt like it also might be a product that she would use if she was a real person so I'll hop off and then we will come back and do the red lips okay so there's with the mascara so yeah pretty clean simple nothing crazy going on if you added just like a neutral lip to this look, I feel like that would be maybe her everyday look that she wears like to work and stuff. 
but we're gonna do the red lip. I have the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Cherry. This is the only red lipstick that I have. I don't have a red liner. I probably should invest in that. And we will just apply this the best that we can. All right, so there it is with the red lip. Uh, not the most perfect application, but it looks pretty okay to me. And I definitely feel like it's a little less intimidating when I see it put with such a neutral overall look. Like it stands out, but it's not like ridiculous to me. So maybe that's something that I will take from this and try to channel my inner Sophie and take some risks be more self-confident and self-assured and maybe bust out a red lip on my next like date night or something. But yeah, so this is the final look. I hope my explanation of the character and my brief summary of the book was interesting and helpful. I didn't want to give too much away. I don't like to do that in my book reviews when I write them. I don't like to summarize the plot too much. But I think overall what I took from this book and the characters was that friendship and trust are really important when building a relationship. It's good to have that foundation and then it's okay to work through your feelings and be vulnerable and also a little confused at the same time. But as long as you are communicating, then that's all you can do and you have to kind of take that leap and that risk in communicating to see where it's going to end up and how it's going to go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below if you liked this style, if you liked kind of melding the world of books with makeup. I think this might be a little series that I do here every so often. So if there's a particular book or a character from a book that you've read recently, that you would like to see me try to interpret into a makeup look, please leave that in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. I will say contemporary romance and like women's contemporary fiction is my main genre that I read on the regular. I'm not super into the fantasy, or the world building yet. I have the Akatar books on my to read list, but I have not taken the leap. I'm a little hesitant and scared to. Besides that, if there's anything anyone, any character, any book, you know, we've seen like there's the Twilight palette and stuff. So like even if it's just the overall like sense and feel of the book that I can interpret into a makeup look, please leave that in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That would really help me out. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you get notified of all my upcoming videos. Next week will be my monthly project pan update. So that will be exciting to check in on those five items. And then I think after that, I'm gonna try kind of a vlog style makeup chores day. So look for that too in the coming weeks. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.